From the moment it was declared, this is your new home, I knew my life was about to change drastically. We can't keep caring for a sick person, they bluntly informed me as I was unexpectedly driven to my aunt's house. By the time we arrived, I discovered my father had decided not to fund my medical treatments anymore, choosing instead to support my sister's education abroad. Speechless and disoriented, I struggled to absorb the shock. However, my aunt greeted me with warmth and an unexpected offer. Sophia, would you like to join our family? This marked the beginning of my new life under the care of my aunt and uncle. Now, seven years later, my name is still Sophia, but I find myself with two very different sets of parents. One set I view with disappointment and the other I hold in great esteem and affection. The reason for my three families traces back to an illness that has complicated my relationships since childhood, frequent and mysterious seizures that demanded constant care. Although medications help manage the symptoms, stress and fatigue can trigger these episodes, which is why my biological parents restricted me from physical activities. I was often just an observer during physical education classes, never freely playing with my peers. Contrastingly, my younger sister Ellie, who is four years younger, was full of life and talent, bearing the full weight of our parents' aspirations. Her passion was tennis, and she excelled in it from an early age, joining reputable clubs and becoming a star player. As Ellie's skills blossomed, so did the disparity in how our parents treated us. She was given nutritious, home-cooked meals, while I often received plain bread and instant soup, sometimes only leftovers from her meals. Ellie was dressed in fashionable attire, whereas I wore hand-me-downs. For birthdays and holidays, Ellie was celebrated extravagantly, while I was frequently overlooked. This unfair treatment became a routine part of my life. Despite her innocence, Ellie would often ask me to play tennis with her, her eyes shining with hope. Sorry, I can't do intense exercise, I would say reluctantly. Once she suggested, we can at least pass the ball, right? As she reached out to hand me the tennis, our mother intervened sharply, preventing me from taking it and sharply reminding me of the risks. Sophia, you never know when you might have a seizure, so don't do anything, she shouted, causing Ellie to stop in her tracks, the ball rolling away untouched. A particularly poignant incident occurred when I was in the first year of middle school. Feeling unwell one spring day, I was left alone at home while my parents attended Ellie's important tennis game. Lying in bed, the solitude and illness overwhelmed me, escalating my stress and triggering a severe seizure. Recognizing the danger, I called an ambulance. Upon regaining consciousness in the hospital, I learned I would be alone through the night, my family planning to visit only the next morning. This loneliness, combined with the caring embrace of my aunt and uncle's home, cemented my new life and outlook. Navigating the complex emotions tied to my family's dynamics and my pursuit of resilience and understanding. When my family was away on a tennis trip, I found myself being whisked away in an ambulance. At that moment, I felt overlooked and unimportant, as if I were merely an inconvenience rather than a part of the family. Overwhelmed with sadness, Tears clouded my vision. I buried myself under a blanket and cried in silence. After the incident, my parents, possibly reacting to neighborhood gossip, started leaving me with my aunt, who was my father's sister. She and my uncle, who didn't have children of their own, welcomed me with open arms. They worked at a level designer company and their home was always filled with laughter and creativity. Every visit was a joy they cherished my company often saying how delightful it was to have me around, almost like having a child of their own. They introduced me to a fascinating game that created, set in an imaginary world. I could spend hours immersed in it, enjoying the adventures and challenges it offered. Mealtimes were another highlight at their home, where my aunt's exceptional cooking had me always asking for seconds. She even enjoyed picking out clothes for me, making each visit feel like a holiday. Visiting my aunt and uncle became my refuge, providing emotional comfort and a sense of belonging. As summer approached and the school year ended, my father packed our car for what seemed like an extended stay at their house. Upon arrival, the mood was unusually tense. My father, in a rare good mood, announced shockingly that this would now be my new home. He revealed that they could no longer afford my medical expenses because they needed to fund my sister's overseas tennis scholarship. My aunt and uncle protested vehemently, but my parents were resolute. 
My aunt bravely declared that she would take me in. Despite the turmoil, my aunt gently assured me, though it seemed I hadn't been told the full plan. She urged me to discuss this properly with my parents, though the thought of mending that relationship felt daunting. Resigned yet hopeful, I asked to stay permanently with my aunt and uncle. In their loving gaze, I found my new family. They agreed, and we later formalized the arrangement through a special adoption process. Living with them, I flourished, actively participating in school activities and even taking up competitive trading card games, my health steadily improving under their care and support. Now, I find genuine happiness and stability with my aunt and uncle, embraced not just by their presence but also by their unwavering support and love. They never held me back, even with the challenges I faced, allowing me to grow, compete, and thrive in ways I never imagined possible. The day I joined the high school trading card club marked the beginning of an extraordinary journey in the competitive world of trading card games. This club was renowned for its excellence, and I was eager to hone my skills in such a vibrant setting. By my second year, my dedication paid off when I won the national championship, triumphing over participants from well-known schools. Overwhelmed with happiness, I rushed home to share the triumphant news with my aunt and uncle. By this time, my health had significantly improved, the seizures that once plagued me had nearly ceased, and before my high school graduation, a doctor joyfully confirmed that I was completely healed. After high school, I continued to compete in trading card tournaments, with my aunt and uncle's unyielding support. Their pride in my successes felt as if they were celebrating their own achievements. By the age of 25, I had become a prominent figure in the trading card community often referred to as the queen of trading cards. As Christmas approached, a decade after my aunt and uncle had taken me in, I felt a deep urge to give back to them for all the love and support they had provided. As I walked home one chilly winter day, planning a special Christmas surprise, I noticed several unfamiliar shoes at the entrance. Curious, I called out, I'm home, is someone here? As I stepped inside. In the living room, a high school girl sat on the sofa. My aunt greeted me, but I was puzzled by the girl's presence. She looked vaguely familiar. Suddenly, it clicked, Ellie? Sophia? I exclaimed. Though she had changed with age, I recognized my sister, Ellie. At the sound of her name, her face crumpled, and she burst into tears. Yes, what's going on? I asked, still in shock. My aunt then explained that Ellie had run away from home. As Ellie wiped her tears, she shared the troubling events at home. She had been crushed by the pressure our parents placed on her to succeed in tennis, a life she had never chosen for herself. They had dismissed her pleas and aspirations, demanding she not abandon the sport, despite her unhappiness. Ellie recounted how, during a career counseling session, she had bravely stated her decision to step away from tennis, only to face our father's wrath. Overwhelmed and desperate, she had fled to our aunt's house, seeking refuge. Hearing her story, I was speechless. While I had found a nurturing home with our aunt and uncle, Ellie had suffered under our parents' strict expectations. I had no idea you were going through this, Ellie, I said, my voice heavy with regret and sympathy. Quickly, she shook her head, her small shoulders trembling. No, you've endured so much yourself, and yet here I am asking for help, she murmured, looking down. Don't worry about it, I'm really happy you came here, I reassured her, my heart swelling with a mixture of joy and protectiveness. My aunt and uncle nodded in agreement. That's right. It was good to escape from them. Ellie, relax. Your big sister will protect you. I affirmed, my words strong despite the uncertainty and reluctance that tugged at my heart. In that moment, I knew I had to support Ellie, just as my aunt and uncle had supported me. Together, we would navigate this new chapter, finding strength in the family we chose, not the one we were born into. Pondering how to approach the situation, I carefully crafted a plan to be carried out on Christmas Day. The cold winter air hinted at impending snow as I approached the house I hadn't seen in a decade. My heart pounded as I rang the doorbell, bracing myself for the confrontation. The door swung open abruptly. Welcome back. Oh, we've been waiting for you, my father exclaimed, his tone overly cheerful. Both of my parents sported bright, forced smiles, a clear sign they knew of my visit through my aunt likely aware it involved my sister, Ellie. Welcome back? Waiting? What do you mean, after you threw me out? I questioned, 
puzzled and irritated by their facade. My mother, with a tone too sweet, reached for my hand, urging, Come on, it's cold. Let's go inside. No, thank you. I'm actually quite busy and can't stay long, I replied crisply, noticing their smiles falter momentarily before they quickly plastered them back on. They then proceeded to loudly praise my achievements. The queen of the trading card world, huh? Your dad is proud of you. You've won lots of prize money. I've been bragging about it in the neighborhood. So come back soon. My mother chimed in. Their behavior only heightened my irritation. Calmly, I responded. Why should I come back? Because a family should be together, right? I echoed my father's words with a skeptical tone. His suggestion left me stunned with disbelief at their audacity. How dare you say that after abandoning me? I thought furiously to myself. Outwardly, I maintained my composure as they continued their charade, insisting, your mother cleaned up your room and we even replaced the carpet so you can practice comfortably at home. Feel free to ask us for anything. It became painfully clear that this performance was not for me, but for the neighbor's ears. They were crafting a narrative in which they were the supportive parents of a successful competitive card player, just as they had used my sister's tennis career to bolster their social image. I watched them with a cynical smile. Truly appalling. Your selfish efforts are meaningless. Actually, I'm planning to quit competitive trading card gaming in a few years. The shock on their faces was palpable. My father lost for words and my mother visibly stunned. Competitive card gaming requires reflexes, concentration, and physical stamina, I started explaining, ready to deflate their pretenses and assert my independence from their shallow expectations. I acknowledged to my parents that my days of competing against younger players were numbered. I plan to retire after earning a bit more prize money, I shared, maintaining a cheerful tone despite the tension in the air. Their reaction was immediate and clear, the forced smiles fell away replaced by expressions of disbelief and irritation. What will you do after you retire? My father asked, his tone heavy with concern. I might be unemployed for a while, I replied with a grin, keen to see their reaction. As expected, their faces darkened further. Unemployed? Without a proper job? Do you have any idea how embarrassing that would be for us at work? My father exclaimed, his voice filled with frustration. Yes, and so you can forget about me coming back to this house. I never intended to return anyway, I stated firmly, watching as his frustration turned to anger. How insolent! My father shouted, his voice echoing through the quiet neighborhood. My mother, panic-stricken, glanced around, worried about the neighbor's prying eyes. I actually came here to discuss Ellie's situation. She's currently living healthily with me at our aunt's house, I continued, shifting the conversation to what truly mattered. What did you say? Have you kidnapped her? That's unforgivable. Give her back to her mother. My mother exclaimed, suddenly playing the victim. No, I have no intention of giving her back. Absolutely not. I will take care of my sister, I declared firmly, meeting my mother's theatrical despair with a steady gaze. What are you talking about? I will call the police, she threatened, her voice shrill with agitation. Remaining calm amidst their panic, I explained, I've already discussed the situation with the police and reported it to child services. I've consulted with a lawyer as well. In fact, you are the offenders here. What did you say? My father gasped, caught off guard by my preparedness. I've consulted various professionals to continue supporting my sister. Considering the possibility of you accusing me of kidnapping, I've also familiarized myself with the legal regulations. Since Ellie has reached adulthood at 19, she can legally decide her own residence, which surpasses your parental rights. Ellie chose to leave home of her own volition to escape your negative influence, and she faces no legal issues in choosing to live with me, her sister, I explained confidently. With this factual backbone, I faced my parents squarely, ready to protect my sisters and my own autonomy. Staying with you only brings unhappiness. We are not tools for you to flaunt for your own vanity, I concluded ready to end the toxic cycle and build a healthier life for Ellie and myself. As the shouting escalated, I noticed a neighbor peering over, clearly drawn by the commotion. Seizing the moment to bring the truth to light, I amplified my voice for all to hear. These people halted my medical treatment to fund my sister's tennis training abroad. Without my aunt and uncle's intervention, 
I might not be alive today, I declared, ensuring every word carried across the neighborhood. Oh, wait, what are you saying? My mother interjected, flustered by my public accusations. Ignoring her, I raised my voice even louder, determined to expose the full extent of their actions. You forced Ellie to pursue tennis for your own pride, sacrificing her happiness in the process. I continued, quiet down. My father bellowed, his face flushed with anger as he reached out to grab me. I swiftly dodged his grasp, fueled by a fierce resolve. What kind of parents are you? Insisting she can't quit tennis until she goes pro. You see your children as mere tools, I accused. The confrontation peaked with my stark declaration. Neither I nor my sister will ever return here. If you try to interfere, I will call the police. Just so you know, I'm fully prepared to take legal action. That's why I'm here today. With a stern gaze, I met their twisted expressions of discomfort. Looking around, I noticed several neighbors watching the intense family argument unfold from their windows and front yards, their faces etched with surprise and concern. Resolved never to return, I left the house with my head held high, confident in my decision. Time passed, and eight years later, at the age of 37, I reached a significant turning point and decided to retire from competitive trading card gaming. Although I had initially planned to retire at 27, caring for Ellie became my priority. Her harsh childhood training had caused a knee injury, altering her aspirations. No longer aiming to be a professional tennis player, Ellie set a new goal, becoming a furniture business. After a year of preparatory school, Ellie advanced to vocational school. It was during this period that I fully understood the extent of her suffering under our parents' harsh expectations. Committed to helping her heal from her past, I supported her tuition fees. Eventually, Ellie graduated and earned her qualification as a furniture business. Now, she dedicates her life to assisting athletes, a reflection of her resilience and strength. Son, I'll repay you one day, Elle always says with a cheerful grin whenever we meet. Her face radiates vitality, a testament to her newfound purpose and the supportive bond we've built, far from the shadows of our past.